Me thanks, not Lonnie, for fixing my coffee like that, you old bastard. Me big mon chew, you little feet patan. I always fix your coffee like that. Remember when you was in high school? After your dear parents died, and I'd fix your breakfast every morning? You fix breakfast? That's what you call a cup of coffee and a ball egg from the corner store? And you know how them ball eggs give me the farts? Folgers? You know I only drink community. Sorry, teenage, but I had to pass by Nunu's to get the groceries this time so I could get the Halloween candy for tonight. And all they had to Nunu's was Folgers and Mellow Joy. And you know how I feel about that damn Mellow Joy. Some bullshit about how Mellow Joy is conspiring with Josh Guillory and aliens to, to build an, another car wash or something? Me please, boy, that's ridiculous. It's the ties, teenage. Aliens ain't for real, no. Me whatever, no. Well, I better get out there and cut the grass before the sun jumps all up on my ass like that. Me, you're gonna have to wait, you. You know that empty house next door, Kumsa? You mean that creepy, kooky, mysterious and spooky, altogether ooky house next door? Me wait, you, boy. That's the one. A family moved in overnight and they came to borrow your lawnmower this morning, Kumsa, so that their yard's nice for the little trick-or-treaters. Like that? Looks like they take their Halloween serious, serious, them. Man, why you say that, you? Man, they already in their costumes like that. And them costumes look real, real, yeah. Real and expensive, Kumsa. I swear to things y'all young people spend y'all little money on. Look out the window. He's cutting grass in his Halloween costume. Damn Kuyon. Good evening, I am Nonkunkula, Count Grand Kilot of Youngsvilvania, and I've come to Acadiana for your blood. Boudin. <laughs> really, I love blood boudin, but all boudin is good. How do you like your boudin? Do you eat it with your hands or do you use a knife and fork? You know, my ex-wife used to squeeze out the boudin onto bread and make a sandwich. She was from Holly Beach. So I guess it was a sandwich, making a sandwich. But she never ate the boudin with her fingers. But that's how I like my boudin. You know, zombies don't eat boudin with their fingers either. They eat the fingers later, them. Kyo ha 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 Really though, enough about boudin. I love cracklins too. But skeletons never eat cracklins, you know why? Because it goes right through them. Kyo ha 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 I love Cajun food. That's the worst thing about being a Cajun vampire. Not getting to eat all the Cajun food you grew up with. So I feed from people who eat Cajun. I prepare it for my guests and blood donors. But my partners don't like my gumbo. Because I like to put beans in my gumbo. Human beans. I have to keep my guests happy though. I'm always throwing parties because the only way I can catch a buzz is to feed off my friends who pass out drunk. Coincidentally, you're all invited to my Halloween costume party. Really, really, it's a great time. My friends all dress up in different costumes every year. Guess what I'm going to be for Halloween this year? Drunk, just like every year. <laughs> Speaking of Halloween, what kind of candy do they give out at River Ranch for trick or treat? 100 grand. Here's a joke. What do ghosts do at cowboys because they can't dance or fight with anyone? They boo day. <laughs> Why did the zombie go to Ashner's? To get his ghoul stones removed. Did I ever tell you about my experience with the Cajun Navy? I operated a blood vessel. Where do the ghosts of downtown Lafayette get their milk and groceries? Pippi's Boudega. Quasimodo and Al Hebert walk into Pat's and the bartender goes, Where'd you get that funny looking hunchback? And Quasimodo says, I picked him up in front of Fox 15. <laughs> Darkness makes its little pass. The midnight hours on your ass. Pawpaw ghosts rise from their robes to come inside and pull your toes. And whosoever rides around without the sack for getting down will 
stand them to face the shans of hell. A rot comes up and start to smell. The badass kids, they walk the streets. Mess up your grass and trick or treat. And grow to ties, they make a pass. To come and mange your little ass. And though you try to calm yourself, you catch them frisson shivers. Cause no little cunyon can escape. Alton of the Triller. Alright team, I know Halloween is one of the few times a year where we can go out in public without drawing attention to ourselves, but... Wait, I always knew we could go out at Halloween because people will just think we're in monster costumes. But this is the first I've heard about the other times we can come out. There's that Comic Con jazz at the Cajun Dome. We can walk around as is, and those dorks just think we're furries. And, since no one really wants to talk to a furry, or get too close to a furry, no one's the wiser. Actually, that's very interesting. What's the other time we can go out in public? That's Mardi Gras, come sha. Oh, because of the costumes? No, because everybody's too drunk to care. Look guys, we're getting a little off topic here, and this is a Halloween special, so the writer can't just have us bicker back and forth to kill time like we usually do. We all know that our Mayor President Josh Guillory has quite the sweet tooth, and that trick-or-treat is a huge temptation for him. So this year he's going into rehab to address his sweets addiction. He's real cranky and going through sugar withdrawals, but he's tasked us with shutting down trick-or-treat in Lafayette. So we're going to need someone to go down to Pippi's Purpose and buy a whole bunch of THC gummies and candies. Then we're going to find a Patsy and switch out their Halloween candy for the quasi-legal drugs. The city will have their revenge on Pippi's Purpose for having the balls to hoist a small flag downtown the way every other business and residence does daily in Lafayette Parish. And there'll be so much pressure from parents and uptight Karens who are finally right about there being drugs and Halloween candy that the city can cancel Trick or Treat permanently. Now the only catch is picking the right Patsy. What about that Patsy Klein? She's one of my favorites. She sings that song, Comsha. Crazy. Crazy for feeling so lonely. No, Greg. Patsy in this context refers to an unsuspecting fool who we can lay the blame on for illegal activities. Well, you could have just said that. What about that Lonnie Mayo fellow? I mean, he's an old misogynist, racist, childless, bachelor, conspiracy theorist that everybody looks at suspiciously. And Josh Giller is going to be blaming him for the police murdering an innocent black bystander in the season finale anyhow. So let's just make him the patsy. All right, Lou, you've got a great handle on this assignment. So I'll have you take the lead, take Spencer with you, and I'll go find a runner for me and Greg to go on. A what's your runner? In the sitcom writing format for a show such as ours, you have an A plot and a B plot. To fill time, writers often include a runner, a third story not connected to the main plot lines, using a character or two who aren't involved in the aforementioned A or B plots. Pooh. Frank Frankenstein, I know you ain't laying on the couch this early in the morning. You better tell me that you at least cut the grass. Me way. Me was just taking a little break. Grass was long, long. Lawnmower blade, dull, dull. But you was only out there for a half hour or so. Did you cut their yard too? Like you said you would? So we don't look like the assholes for having to borrow that lawnmower? Me say blade, dull, dull. Grass, long, long. Sun, hot, hot. Me bring blade to get sharpened. Better gesture than cutting their yard. Seems like the more shawzy gesture. Well, it ain't gonna get sharpened by you laying around the house with the top of your head off. I mean, really, what if the neighbors came by with you all, not dressed for company? Nag, nag. Hello, mother. Father. Stabby, pumpkin. Can Stabby do daddy favor so mommy can get off daddy ass? Mm. Well, that depends on the favor. If it involves torture or bloodletting, then yes. If it involves helping you with your honeydew list, then no. Stab it, get to sharpen blade? Ooh, I love sharpening blades. It centers me and temporarily quiets the tempest of voices inside me, urging me to kill. Thank you, Stabby. Stabby the best. Daddy come, show Stabby how to take blade off lawnmower. Hmm, 
lazy ass. I should listen to my mom and marry the Rougarou. All right. Now that we have these THC candies, we need to come up with a plan for how we're going to break into Lonnie and Nate's house and replace our Halloween candy with these quasi-legal drugs. Looks like you've been on these THC edibles yourself with your no memory having ass. Look, we've already broken to that house like four times this season. That's not going to be a problem. Well, actually, even though it's Halloween... I think you should still use your Tatai Transmo Grigri to give us human disguises. Hey, maybe the Halloween magic Tatai Grigri enhancement effect will let you make me a black guy this time. Uh, so you can do blackface for Halloween? Spencer, that's pretty racist, even for this show. So what, you hypocritical boomer? Your whole character is a racist cultural appropriation. Your voice actor is a freaking white guy. I'll have you know that Dave Mouton, if not part black, is at least honorarily black. I mean, really, he's a soul musician in the Louisiana music scene who plays at the Essence Festival. All his groupies are black women. He's probably got a half a dozen creamy-ass kids running around New Orleans playing saxophone that he never met. Still racist. Boy, your pansy-ass generation doesn't know any more about real racism than they do about being accountable, productive members of society. Hey, T-Boy, you might want to bring that mower back before my nephew T-Nate has a little hissy fit, or an anxiety attack as he calls it, because he has to ask another man for his own property back. Fork you, old man. Ain't you got a hip to break or something? Nah, T-Boy. I got me them titanium hips now. I'll never outlive the warrant in me. And you might want to keep on your side of the property line like that. You see that tree, Comsa? That marks what we call around here the property line. It's as sacred to us Cajuns as life itself. Go have a stroke or something, you old bitch. All right. I done rehearsed what I'm going to say to that little nine-year-old boy to myself like six times to build up confidence towards this confrontation. Come on, boy. You're almost 40 years old like that. You can man up to a nine-year-old without stuttering and stumbling on your words. Say to you, boy, let me holler at you. Now, don't mind letting y'all borrow my lawnmower till y'all get settled in, but y'all had it for a couple hours now, and y'all need to give it back so I can cut my lawn before trick-or-treat. Fork you, you old stranger danger creeper. I didn't borrow shit from you. That was my dad. You want me to get him? I hope you got your shitting pants on. <laughs> yeah, call his goofy ass. I ain't scared of him. If he walks up with an attitude, I promise you he's gonna be the one shitting his pants. Dad! Some stranger weirdo creepo is trying to talk to me. About a lawnmower? Hey, bae. Have bae seen top of head? Me need go outside. Talk to neighbor. Can't go outside without top of head. Franklin Frankenstein, I know you ain't hollering at me to help you find your shit when I got supper to cook and I got to pick up after your lazy ass and your badass kids. But neighbor waiting. Don't want to make bad first impression and seem ungrateful for lawnmower borrowing. Well, you had plenty of time to sharpen the blade and return the lawnmower. We kind of already looked the asshole. That's why we need to find head top now. Don't you raise your voice at me, Frank Frankenstein. I told you a thousand times to hang that thing up when you come home, but you're about as good as listening as you are in the bedroom. Never mind. Me put on top of sofa when took nap me. Fell behind sofa. Me talk to neighbor me. Be right back. Well, that's perfect. What? He's arguing with his new neighbors. Probably over some petty bullshit. But he's distracted so let's hurry up and swap out this THC candy for his Halloween candy so Josh Guillory can shut down trick or treat in Lafayette Parish permanently. No cap? Nice recap. Me, Frank Franklinstein, new neighbor. Want thank you for lawnmower me. Give back now, me. Miss, nice to meet you and welcome to the neighborhood like that. I'm Nate Chasson, the Param, modern Cajun humor.
Hey, you took your sweet time, yeah. I'm gonna be out here in the midday heat cutting grass like a fool. Either that or the rain's gonna come get me. Blade was dull, dull. And you complaining about my lawnmower? No, interrupt me. Me was saying, Blade, do, do, so me sharpen for you. I don't know where you're from, Gro Frank, but around here it's kind of weird like that to sharpen another man's lawnmower blade without asking first, Comsa. It's like letting a strange man spend time alone with your wife. Me from Franklin. Me see, that's what I'm saying, boy. This here is Lafayette Parish, St. Augustine. It's not like that grass y'all got in St. Mary. That St. Mary grass was bred to soothe y'all club feet and y'all web toes, while our grass here was bred to be firm like a mattress. You gotta sharpen that blade at a certain angle yet. But me was just trying to show gratitude for you letting Frank borrow mower. Sorry, me no get mad. Please, let Frank mow yard to repay use of mower. Nah, boy, I don't know you like that. Letting another man cut your yard is like letting him take your wife on a romantic cruise. Y'all might be into yard swinging and yard cucking in St. Mary, but around here, we'll run you off for that shit. Look, you want to borrow my mower till yours comes in? Fine. But at least cut your whole yard like that. Me not understand. Can neighbor explain without condescending? Hmm. You see this thing, Cheer? It's called a tree. The property line runs down from the center of the tree. Your grass needs to be cut all the way to the center of the tree. Me fashe, fashe me, hear you. May you done did it now. You can't be tearing up trees and, and, and moving them come side without a permit from the city. I'm going to report you to the old girl at the HOA. They're going to fine your ass and put a lien on your house. Wait till your wife finds out. You'll be living in the backyard with your stupid ass. Wait, please. Me sorry. Don't report Frank to HOA. Me wife big, big ball breaker. Sorry, my ass. Look, I'm tired of dealing with your sporadic testosterone having Rager Harlick one minute. Sorry, victim. The next. Look. I'll deal with your wife instead. Unless you want that lean on your house, send her over tonight to Susie apologize for your bullshit. And have her wear a short skirt and a lot of makeup. All right, Spence. We'll just swap out this CBD edibles bag for one of these trick-or-treat candy bags. What? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was getting all nostalgic. Man, this place sure brings back memories. Yeah, gross memories. I swear I would pay to get the mental image of you skeeting your Tatai DNA all over Nate Chasson's desktop out of my head. And to think that wackadoo Dr. Mouton impregnated one of his monkeys with your seed. Wait, he, he did? He sure did. Back in episode three, I believe. Don't you watch the show? Actually, I tried to. But like the first 30 seconds of the episodes aren't very funny. And most of it is a bunch of characters standing around talking to each other. It's just kind of boring compared to TikTok videos and the gram. Well, if the show don't get enough views, these sponsors of ours won't come along for a second season, and you and I will be living in Parc Sans Souci. So unless you want to fight a Parc Sans Souci bum for a bench to sleep on, you might have want to pretend it's anime or nerd porn or watch the damn show. Well, if it isn't my old partner, Jared Grones. Excuse me, do I know you? Me wear Grones, that's why I called you my partner. Oh, I didn't recognize you. TikTok fan, right? Hey, I hate to do this, but unless you have a brick and mortar business or you're a Grammy nominated Zotico musician, I'm gonna have to ask for $15 to take a selfie with you, sorry. No, Grones, I'm Lani Mayu, the guy that's been paying you for weeks now to do remotes about the tie sightings in Lafayette. Well, you're not paying me now, are you? Look, I'm preparing to bust into this restaurant with the enthusiasm of a coked out frat grapist and wave my hands in the air like I just don't care. Now for my favorite part of Halloween, separating the good candy from the cheap candy and keeping the good stuff for myself. Hey, what's this? Cool, look at the price tags on this candy. That's high, yeah. This must be that gourmet candy. 
and these green leaf logos on it like that, that means it's all organic. Now this is too good candy to give to them little betas in this neighborhood. Well, I sure hope this skirt is short enough. Frank, I'm going over to the neighbor's house to smooth over your tree moving rampage incident. Okay, honey, just don't do anything me would not do. I can't promise that unless you'd be willing to blow the neighbor to get out of an HOA fine. <laughs> Oh, did you get his name? Hmm, me don't know. Him said name him, but him was being rude, so me not process relevant information. Jackass. I guess I'll just start calling him daddy when I'm down on my knees begging him to- Nate Chasson! Neighbor's name is Nate Chasson! Nathan Chasson, the famous Cajun comic? Hey, let me talk to him. I'd really like to get him to help me with my stand-up routine. No, no, killer stand-up routine, bad, bad. Cajun dub hack, no help. Well, at the very least, I can glamour him to forget about the tree like they do in True Blood. True Blood, Louisiana, representation, bad, bad. Make me fashe me, me smash me. Grones, come with me quick like that. There's breaking news happening down the street. Come on now, Mr. Lonnie. I think I'd know if there was a new restaurant opening up so I can get paid to feign excitement over it. I am a professional journalist after all. No, Grones, I mean actual news. Like Got the Donzilla, a giant reptile with Delcom Reeboks terrorizing downtown Lafayette. That's the problem with you wannabe public figures is you don't know how the news biz works. First, the sales department calls me and tells me where the story is. Then I go to the business and pretend to give two shits. Then we run the story and I get paid. Then I develop a whole side relationship with the business where I do social media posts and TikToks endorsing them in exchange for celebrity treatment and free goods. Bruh, I must be diabetic. I ate a whole bunch of that organic candy, and I feel like I'm about to slip into a very pleasant coma. Man, trick or treat ended 30 minutes ago, and ain't you a little old for trick or treat anyway? Look, I gave away all the cheap candy already like that. But you can have some of this fancy organic candy I've been mangeing on. Come ça. These aren't organic candies. These are THC edibles. Man, that explains why I'm stoned to the bone like that. Jesus Christ! How many of these did you eat? Man, I ate about a bag of those chocolate milk balls. And then I ate a, a container of these sour gummies. Come ça. And then you showed up and I was all like, somebody's at the door. It's too late for trick or treat. And then I opened the door and you were standing there and I was like, wait. And, and then, what are we talking about now? Good lord, you're freaking baked. The recommended dosage for these is one candy. One, one candy. Ha 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 ha. Well, all right. You will come with me and watch my stand-up routine and let me catch a buzz off your blood. I will come with you and watch your stand-up routine and let you catch a buzz off of my blood. And you will forget this whole affair with Frank. And the HOA. Now who's Frank? And what's an HOA? And what is an affair even? 